No, I imagine everyone bounced into training this morning after, uh, I was going to say a rare away win, but an, a win at the weekend. I don't know about bounced, I mean the weather <laughs> and the wind was uh, swaying us about everywhere, but yeah, I think it's, it's always nice um, when you win a game, everybody feels a little bit better, but like I've said on Saturday to you, we just need to go and back it up now. Yeah, but I suppose it's a game that you go into, possibly as favourites now, being in the higher division, to have that little bit of confidence behind you can only help. Yeah, I'm, I'm still at that stage where I'm, uh, you know, I want the boys to consistently put performances in. So at the moment, it's, you know, show Chester the utmost respect. Don't expect anything other than an incredibly tough game. And uh, with what we've got, we, you know, we have to find a way to win the game. And uh, we'll certainly try and be positive. We'll certainly try and take the confidence from Saturday and, and try and put it in the play. But, um, you know, just because we... we not nullify them, but we had a tight game at their place. It doesn't mean you're going to come at home and have a different game. Are you as excited and the players as excited about this game now, especially given the draw on the TV and everything that comes with that, as the supporters are? Yeah, I, I'm. it's weird. Whether it's FA Cup or not, I'm just more about trying to build some momentum. So for me as manager, whether it's FA Cup, whether it's league, is immaterial. It just means I've got 20 players to have in a squad instead of 16. Um, but um, you know, I'm just trying to sort of back up one win with another, and you know, I'm, I'm almost challenging the players to say, okay, you're starting to run harder now. You're starting to do the the mucky stuff that keeps clean sheets or gives yourself a chance of keeping it. Can you show me you can do it again? And then can you show me you can do it again? And regardless of what competition, it's just trying to build them habits. And I suppose the incentive is the same for Chester as well. So they've been given that little bit of added, added extra incentive to get through too. Yeah, of course. There's, there's obviously a little bit of TV money and obviously the exposure that TV brings a football club. So all of that's good for both our owners and theirs. And um, you know, both teams will be giving it everything. The FA Cup's a magical competition. Um, but we've just got to try and, like I say, back up what we've done better in the last couple of games. What sort of game are you expect them? Do you think it'll be a similar and a tight game as it was at their place? Yeah, I don't know. I think both teams maybe were f trying to find out a little bit about where they where they land lied with each other in the first game. I think, you know, we was trying to sort of make sure their system when you play against the they were playing the diamond at the time and they've played it since, but when you're playing against diamond you've got to make sure it doesn't you, know, you don't get it wrong because if you get it wrong you can feel like they've got a couple more players on the pitch than you so, and I thought we did that quite well and we switched play well then they changed to a 3-5-2 in the second half You know, so there's questions of whether they'll they'll come out and go let's go that way let's stick with what's brought us success so there's all these things but all I can do is prepare my team and like I say if we get the hard yards in we run we fight for each other we have a bit of team spirit and we show our qualities with pace when the opportunities come then hopefully we'll, we'll give anyone a game both teams have got players that are cup tied and can't play in this game. What are your thoughts on players becoming cup tied? Because it seems only in this country that seems to be a thing. You go to European competition, you can play for two sides in the Champions League and the Europa League. Mm. Do you think it's right that players are, are cup tied? Um, I don't know. I don't have a strong enough view on it to be honest with you. But it, I think it boils down to something that we want to get right at this football club. Certainly, Matt, the chairman, and Julianne really want to get right, which is our process is to recruit players so that we start the season with a strong squad um, of players that we want at the football club um, and then we don't have to keep adding unless you know we have a, a, a glut of injuries so I think um, from this point of view you know you learn that if you're going to keep going to the loan market constantly you might lose players through being cup tied. Okay your squad then you say you can have the nine, the nine subs tomorrow is it a case where basically <coughs> if you're fit you're going to be in the squad tomorrow it would be something like that it'll be uh, everyone we've got um, all, all turn up for the game no we, we like I say it's I think it's it's unique for me because the last few years I've worked with three subs from five it's uh, to have five from nine with three attempts plus half time and then a concussion sub and <laughs> it takes a little while just to work it all out and an extra one in um, in extra time if it goes that long. So, uh, yeah, you have to make sure you're switched on as manager to get them ones right. Yeah, I'm sure you do. You substitute goalkeeper tomorrow night. Is Rory fit to be the substitute goalkeeper if needed? Yeah, he's trained. He, he caught, caught a ball awkward and his finger swelled up back end of last week, but um, he's back in training now. So, yeah, yeah, don't see a problem with that. Anyone who's not available to you? Um, there's a couple that I've got that have got niggles and I've got decisions to make on them. Ollie Green is stiff around his, his groin area and his hips very much so. I mean, again, it's a lad who's getting fitter every game. Um, you know, the demands of first in football. So he's, I've got a decision to make on whether I use him tomorrow right from the start or whether I um, give him a breather. 
Um, you know, Paddy had a little niggle, but was out on the training pitch today, as was one or two others. So I got decisions, but luckily we've we've got people sort of back who have trained for a couple of weeks now, and we trained them quite hard. So I feel more confident they can do the hard yards. And do those decisions as well evolve Saturday's game? I think of Paddy. If he was to play and get injured, if you can't get anybody in. You're really, really like, aren't you, in that position? Yeah, I, I tend to think at the moment, just take each game. The, the next game's the most important. You know, when you've got a really strong squad of fully fit players and you don't even know your best 11 or you don't know this, that's, it's quite easy to rotate because whoever you bring in, you think up to the task and ready. I, if, I, if at all possible, I just want to focus on this game, what team can win this game, and then count the bodies Thursday, and then what team have I got available that can win the next game. And... For us, I think that's the way forward. How daring are you as a manager, say, if this game is level with 10, 15 minutes to go, to try and avoid that extra time? <laughs> absolutely, I'd be uh, certainly trying to attack the game. No, absolutely. You, you've, um, no one wants extra time, but if it gets to that point and the result's there, you know, the, the, the last thing we'd be doing is, is not throwing people forward trying to get a winner. And penalties? Do you prepare for penalties or is that putting the players in a bad mindset? Um, I've done it before, depending, I've, I've, I've prepared for penalties before. Um, it's hard to ever recreate the atmosphere I've taken them before as well. And we've tried to do things, I've tried to do things with teams where uh, we go through the whole process of walking from the halfway line and stuff. When we was in the playoffs, we did it. We had two friendlies during COVID before going into the playoffs. And we did that. We asked both teams because they were in the playoffs as well whether we could do penalties at the end and try and recreate it. And it was a good idea because obviously the importance of, of the playoffs. And if you do practice penalties, do you know whether certain players are going to put their penalties? Have they told you? Have you they practice, or is it just down to them on the day how they feel when I, they get to the sport? Yeah, I've always said. I mean, I, me as a player, I just chose my spot and didn't change my mind. Players are different. They walk up, they want to look at the goalie's eyes, they do different things. It's whatever suits them, however they like to take penalties. I prefer to have people that that put their hand up and say, I want one, and you know, you just go with that. Do you think the crowd can play a part tomorrow night? The crowd always play a part. I mean, going back to Saturday's game, they were incredible. You know, you, you wouldn't have known who the home team was on Saturday because they were that noisy. So, um, no, they can always play a part. And like I said, the biggest part the crowd can play is doing what they're doing now, you know, just total support. You know, I said before, Enjoy us when we're good, support us when we're when we're not so good. And at the moment, they've had to do a lot more supporting than enjoying. We know that. Um, but if they can just stick with that, that will massively help us through what's a tough period. And hopefully, then we can we can take them some joy further down the line. Oh, good luck. Cheers. Me. How are you doing? And just how much importance are you putting on this tag? Because I think it's been 13 years, isn't it, since uh, York last reached the second round? I didn't know that. There you go. It's a good point. Um, it's, it's the next game, the most winnable game. So for me, um, I want to get to the third round of the FA Cup. I'd love to get a, a good draw um, to have a TV game against Wigan and challenge yourself against higher opposition. I played Wigan two seasons ago with, with Solihull and we went for a replay and lost in extra time in the, in the replay. Um, so I'd love to challenge myself to that um, and the team to that. So, yeah, it's the next most important game. When, and if we can bring a good cup run to the guys and, and help momentum carry on and that carries on in the league, then, then brilliant. How much would it mean to the club as well to get into the second round and, and within sight of that potential loop <coughs> third round? Yeah, I think initially it gives them a TV game, a bit of exposure. There's the money that comes with a TV game, so that always helps. Um, so I think from that point of view, it's great for both us and Chester to know that, that carrot's there. Um, and then if you can make sure, if you can have a chance of being in the hat, when the draw is made for the third round, it's it's special. Being watching the third round draw is special if you know you're part of it. Is this a chance to get York City back on the map as well? This FA Cup. Um, perhaps. I, I mean, I I wouldn't trade it off for climbing the league table and and you know pushing on and putting a team together that can challenge at the top of, of the league going forward. Um, I wouldn't trade it for that, but it's a close second. You've been here a couple of months now. How are you finding the challenge at York? <laughs> um, a challenge is, is the first word, but a, a really good one as well. Um, the owners have been brilliant, really supportive um, in everything we're trying to do at the training ground, staff, bits and bobs, they're, they're right behind it. They, they want to create a, a, a culture of excellence to drive forward because they know the importance of that. Um, 
I, I, I have, and I'm not just saying this, I've been really, really pleasantly surprised with the fans. Like, I know they've always been a really well supported club and a great club, but they've been magnificent. Like, and, and we haven't been anywhere near as good as I'd like us to be, but they've been magnificent. And I think they can see at least they've got a team that are having the right go every week. So I, I want that relationship to stay and to build because I think if the club are going to do good things, the relationship between the management, the squad and the, and the, and the fans is crucial. Are you more confident now than when you came in that you can keep the club up this season and then, and then kick on and move up? Yeah, season? I knew, you know, so people ask me when I took the job, like, oh, blimey, you know, team struggling, do you regret it, this, that and the other? And I said, no, I said, the first six months of this job is always going to be the toughest. You know, you're walking into something and you've got lots to change, whether it's personnel on the playing field, whether it's the behind the scenes, the culture. Um, and it, very similar to when I arrived at Wimbledon uh, in my first ever job, I was like a rabbit in the headlights that time round. I think I'm a bit more experienced now. But I think you go in and you go, right, I know, I know what to do. Yeah. And you, you obviously need the results on the pitch to try and back that up because it becomes a lot tougher without them. Um, but I, I think this club could be, you know, the best club in this league to work at and go forward if we didn't get these next six months right. Yeah, because people speak about like three, five year plans. Have you got anything like that? Yeah? I never think that far ahead in management. <laughs> no. um, to be fair, I've been very fortunate. I, I managed Wimbledon for six years. I was one of the longest serving managers. So I've done that. I managed Notts County for two and a half years, which was, I think, the most anyone in in since 2000 had done and, and I had two good years at Solio so I've had only three jobs in a you know 10 year period I'd like to spend a bit of time yeah. at York and, and enjoy um, all the work I'm putting in now enjoy it next season and the season after when hopefully we can bring success so so I love it the city's beautiful as I said the fans have been magnificent so I'd love to to be able to do that but I've got to get this first six months right first. Neil just Take a quick look back at Saturday's game, win at fail. You must be really impressed with that because it was an excellent performance thing all over the pitch. Yeah, I think it was the most complete as in, I, I didn't think we passed the ball brilliantly all the time during the game, but um, it was the most complete as in whatever we'd set the players, the game plan, they executed it. You know, we knew Fylde had pace, we knew they'd be 4 2 3 1, we knew their wide men would, would cause problems, their full backs would bomb on regularly with, with pace and power. And you know we made sure the lads were aware of that, but we also knew where we could hurt them, and we did. And to get both things right, it's it's rare that a game plan is executed perfectly, you know. And I always say to the lads, I always will give you a way to win this game if you listen and execute it. We're working as a team, so when you get performances where we don't, it becomes frustrating as a manager. But then that's the level we're at. So yeah, it was spot on, and we got our just reward. And that makes it four league wins this season. Now three of them have come away. The next thing to do is create a winning mentality at home as well. Yeah, um, we need to win games at home. I think we've, I mean, we've only lost one. Am I right at home? Is was it the Barnet game? Was the only one we've lost since I've been here? Um, we've only lost the one at home since I've been here. Um, but we've thrown points away. If you look at, I thought we deserved to get more from the Solihull game, but we had a bad start to the second half and found ourselves behind. I think obviously the last minute goal at Bromley we should deal with, that should be another win. So I think there's games where we should have, I feel like we should have won more. Um, and yeah, you're right, we do need to make it a fortress, but at the same vein, only Barnet have really come here and and taught us a bit of a lesson. Other than that, um, we've been really, really competitive at home as well. And you've wanted improvement for a long time, especially defensively, and that clean sheet must be really pleasing for you as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we work hard on the defence. We've obviously brought George in, who's done great. Stocky's back fit as well now. So I think all these little things have, have married up. But it's it's not just that. When I was watching the games prior to becoming manager, there was a lot of players not tracking runners. There was a lot of gaps in the defence. There was a lot of people, individuals, not doing jobs that they should do, which are habits. But perhaps back then, I don't know, they didn't have the legs to do it. They didn't have the fitness levels to do it. I don't know. But... The one thing message I have tried to get, if and I always say it to the lads, if we're not at our best with the ball, if you're brilliant without it in your work, in your competitiveness, in your chasing, in your tracking runners, in your defending your box, you'll always give yourself a chance of being involved in a game. And I think that's a touch wood, that's drip fed a little bit through because we have been better in that respect. I think before you came in, it was Deepak and Yemi who was amongst the goals, he was scoring all the goals pretty much. No goal for him on Saturday, it's come from Scott Bates and Ryan Fellfield. 
must be happy to see the goals being shared about the team a bit more. They need to be. It's an absolute essential. So I say to whether someone's playing in a front three, whether they're playing as eights in a midfield, you've got to produce stats. You've got to produce numbers that warrant your place in the team. You know, you can't play a 4-4-2 and have your two wide men and two centre forwards not assisting, creating, scoring. They have to because who else is going to do it? And it's the same in whether you're playing a back three. You know, the wing backs have a responsibility to defend and get forward. And, you know, I praised Ryan Fallowfield a few weeks back because I said he was our most dynamic player when we played in the uh, Needham Market in the Cup at home. But, you know, the running off the ball to hard yards, A, to get there to put the ball back across for Burge, B, to get there to finish the chance for the second goal, they're important parts. You have to, you have to run hard to be able to arrive in a box off the ball to score goals. And... If people do that, they give themselves a better chance. I just mentioned there Ryan Fellfield. Not to single out anyone, but I thought Ryan Fellfield has been excellent all season. Just how important has he been to you? Well, he's taken on the stuff that we've worked on probably better than others. And he's more natural on the right. You know, we've been uh, Paddy's had to play on the left, etc. Thierry's a young lad who we're trying to develop. And, you know, I almost want Thierry to look at Ryan and go, OK, because Thierry's potentially got all the ability to be whatever he wants. But you need to look and go, this guy runs hard, but he's got the physical capabilities of doing it because he does everything right. He does his prehab, his rehab, his weights, his gym work, everything right, and he runs hard off the ball. And the biggest problem with running off the ball that players experience is people don't want to waste energy running off the ball if they're not sure they're going to get the ball because then they're tired in the game, but they haven't affected the game. But I always say to the forward players, you might need to run 20 times in behind. You might only get it four, but what you'll create for the rest of the team in the 16 other times is the opposition dropping and space for the, the, the team to play. So it's unselfish running and everybody's got to have it and all the best teams do. And Ollie Green as well, he's adapted really well, I think, from under-23s football, was it, to men's football now? What's that like? Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's funny with Ollie because he, he blew up in his first game about an hour in and then we was training the following week and we was doing quite an intense Tuesday. And I could see him with his hands on his knees and really trying to suck it in. And we hadn't even got to the fitness work. This was just the, the bit. And I said, oh, blowing a bit there, Ollie. And he was like, yeah, yeah. And it is that, you know, you come from development work in the 23s and you come into high intensity, which you need to. I mean, everything we do is sort of peaks up during the week and peaks back down towards the game so that they're at their freshest for the game. But you've got to hit stats during the week that, Complement what you how you expect your team to play because if we don't get that right during the week we fail the boys on a Saturday and Greeny has just got fitter and fitter he's found it hard but you know like I said he's had a few niggles a little bit of tightness maybe that's coming because of the loads and I've got a decision to make on him but certainly great kid wants to learn wants to do the hard yards and if we can get him fitter I think he'll be a very good player for us. Is it, and is it an initial one one month loan spell has that been extended or anything? Uh, not at the moment I mean he's he's still. In that, you know, I haven't been told by Lisa looks after everything, she's great, she'll inform me when that month's up and we'll have a conversation about it. But at the moment, we feel like we're getting him to, to his peak. And um, like I say, we are looking to bring people in, but if we feel green is part of that, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly be keeping him around. And to touch on Chester quickly, you've got them coming up tomorrow. Lost at the weekend, but still a really strong team. Do you expect them to change much from what you saw a couple of weeks back? I don't know, and that's I just mentioned it there. I, I really don't know. Um, you know, they change shape during the game. They might think that might be the best way to come and play us away from. I don't know. Uh, if I'm not sure about an opposition shape or that it's inconsistent, I won't over over focus on it in my prep because you can go right we're going to set up to do this you're pressing there you're doing that and then also it's a totally different shape so um, I'll, I'll focused on us how I want to approach the game how positive I want us to try and be uh, with our shape with our system with our personnel and then when their team sheet comes in and we work out how they're going to play we'll make sure our boys are aware of everything and finally you've had a lot of news about the FA Cup since that Chester game you know you're playing the next round you know it's going to be on TV if you get through Everyone must be so fired up ahead of this. I, yeah, they are. I don't think they they need to all of that to be the the bit that gives them the edge to play. They should. I'm hoping it's just we love winning, and you know afterwards when you're in a dressing room, I say it to the lads quite often. How do you feel at five o'clock when you've put in a good performance and won a game of football? And there's no better feeling. You feel great. I feel great. Everyone feels great because our week's work goes perfect. That should be the feeling that makes you go. I'm going to work my socks off in training, I'm going to do all my gym work, I'm going to stay fit, and when the team comes, I'm going to do everything I can for that win. 
because there's no better feeling than it. Whether you're playing Wigan in the next round live on telly or we've got Hartlepool in the league, you've just got to try and keep momentum because when you win one, you win a second, you win a third, it starts to become a habit and it's a good one to have. Thanks and good luck.